Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Ted Flint. With us today, Assemblyman Al Graff, who serves District Number 5, Suffolk County. Assemblyman, good to see you here. Thanks for having me. On a Monday morning, it's, uh, it's kind of like a, 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 I guess, a one-issue show, a theme show. We're going to start off talking about minimum wage and also uh, a package of bills to better protect police officers. Right. You're going to weld those two things together. Yeah, well, you know, I just got done with a, another police funeral. This is the third one that I've gone to this year where a 25-year-old officer lost his life. Uh, and uh, it ties in where they're pushing forward a minimum wage bill for someone that working at McDonald's to make $15 an hour. And the whole crux of this is to take that person out of poverty. Right? That's their home. But meanwhile, the city council refuses to give us a home rule message to protect police officers. So if you have a firefighter or you have a police officer that puts his life in harm's way and they get injured, what happens now is they're going to retire on $29 a day taxed with a Social Security offset. So you have someone that put on a fireman's uniform, a cop's uniform, ran into a, a burning building, mm -hmm. ran into the middle of a gunfight to protect the citizens in New York City and you're going to plunge them into poverty if they get hurt. Fine example, if you look at the young woman, female police officer that went up into a fire with her partner. Her partner died, and her whole throat was burned out. She is the mother and sole supporter of, I think it's two or three children. And they're going to retire her on $29 a day. There's no way she can survive on that. And she's not going to be able to work again because her throat is gone. Mm -hmm. Now you have the young police officer that was attacked with the axe, right? And there's no saying that he's going to come back to the police department. And they got to do the same thing to him. So he's sitting there protecting the people of New York City. He gets attacked by a madman with an axe, hits him in the head. Yeah. Yeah. He just got out of the hospital not that long ago. And he can't go back as a police officer but they're going to retire him on $29 a day with a Social Security offset and taxed. So I, I, it's just unbelievable. The city council in New York City refuses to give us the home rule message. Any reason why from them? There's an anti-cop sentiment. They're not back in their police department. And you know what? I was a cop in the 80s, and this is going to go back to the 1980s. It's going, you know, crimes go to soar. I, they're just, it's unbelievable. They have no idea what they're doing. And they're hurting these men and women. And I'll tell you, as an ex-police officer, right, the bottom line is I'm going to put my life on the line. I'm going to put my family's financial, you know, um, environment in harm's way and run out there and put my life on the line too. Yeah. And I'm not going to have the city back me on it. They're not going to back me up. I mean, this is a very dangerous environment. It's getting dangerous all over the country. It is a, a big anti-cop environment. And if you look at two officers in Mississippi yeah. who were just killed. Now, last night, there was a police officer in Westchester County that was dragged by a car. Thank God those, you know, he didn't work for New York City hmm. because he'd have been in poverty next month. So it's unbelievable. We have to push it. We have to make people aware of this. And I think the governor needs to intercede here and insist that they give us the home rule message. If not, we've got to find a way to go around them. But, you know, they're sitting there and a person making, fifth, you know, working at McDonald's will make more money, right, to support his family than a cop that was injured. Mm. Thankfully, police officer Moore, you know, police officer Moore, he did the right thing. He stood up. He took a gun off the street. That gun would have killed other people. And, uh, but if he would have survived, all right, he's 25 years old, he would have had to survive the rest of it. And he took a bullet through the brain stem. So there was no way that he was ever going to be able to work again. And he would have had to retire on $29 a day. I just think it's incredible that the city won't do this. Now we're looking at other things. We're putting together a police package also in order to protect our police officers from this. And that'll be coming out shortly. One of the things is putting bulletproof panels in the front doors of the car. Mm -hmm. 
But the biggest, biggest protection that we can give them is to make the city council actually back up their police officers. Because if not, these communities that they, uh, they patrol are going to become unsafe. Yeah. You know? So I think you have a tape on the minimum wage. We do indeed. Let's uh, take a look at that, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss this further with Assemblyman Al Graff. We're talking about people in poverty, and I'm trying to bring out the egregiousness of the city council who has been pushing this bill and backing this bill, yet they refuse to give a home rule message to take care of firefighters and police officers who put their lives on the line every day. And just to give an example, you had a female police officer who got a throat burned out, okay, when she was responding to help people in a fire. Her partner died. Right? And now what's happening is she's going to be re forced to re retire on $27 a day with a Social Security officer. I want to bring out the uh, young police officer that just got hit, got hit with a hatchet. And because of that, he's going to retire on $27 a day right, with a Social Security offset. This young police officer that just got shot in the head, if he would have retired, it would have been $27 a day. So I just want to bring up the hypocrisy of the city council because we've been begging them to fix this with a uh, home rule message. They refuse to do that. And I think that if we're trying to take care of other people, we should also take care of people that put their lives on the line to protect all of us. Thank you. You know, it seems like a no-brainer to me because, uh, as you point out, if you're a policeman or a, or a fireman, you're running towards a danger. The natural inclination is to run away from it. Right. Well, you know, I'll tell you right now, if I'm a cop in the city, all right, and I get a call from a man with a gun, my car's not going over 10 miles an hour, and it's going to be lights and sirens all the way, right, so that whoever's there leaves by the time I get there. Basically, what they're doing is forcing police officers right. to uh, be a reporting agency, you know, and any young officer out there listening, beware, because I'll tell you right now, you know, if I came on the scene, and I, I made hundreds of arrests, right, and I did my job, but I wasn't in the position they were in. So it's going to be like, wow, that guy with the baseball, that bloody baseball bat running down the street just hit you in the head? That's too bad. Let's yeah. make a report. And, then le and everybody's right. less safe yeah. as a result. Or, uh, wow, that guy walking down the street with your TV set just burglarized your house? That's too bad. Let's make a report. All right. So, I mean, for these cops to put their lives on the line and not have the support of the city council is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at, uh, I mean, look at what happened in Baltimore. I mean, the mayor actually sat there and said, give them room to yeah. destroy. Incredible. Okay, that can happen in New York City any day, right, in a, in a, in a flash. You think the mayor would, uh, would, of New York City would, would take that tact? Well, I don't think the police commissioner took that tack because they went out and protested, and he basically came out and said, you are not taking my city. So he told the protesters, get on the sidewalk, leave passage on the sidewalk. If you come on the street right, to protest, we're going to arrest you. And they walked in there and they started arresting people, and that was put to rest really quick. I mean, the one thing I'll say about police commissioner Bratton is a, is a cop's cop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and when I was at the funeral, this uh, this weekend, you know, when he awarded uh, now Detective Moore, the Detective Shield, first grade detective, he broke down as he was doing it. And I hate to say it, but de Blasio got up there. And it would have been a good speech if somebody else gave it, but it didn't ring true coming from de Blasio. Mm -hmm. It was like listening to the parents of Peanuts. You know, I think every cop in that room, including me, all they heard from him was wah, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's disingenuous. I mean, it's like the city government has a war against f policemen and firemen, all right? And they're not going to do anything for them to keep them um, in a position where they feel that they're getting the backing of the city. It's a sad day for law enforcement. It's a sad day for the fire department. And I could not imagine doing that job under the city government that we have today. Right. So, Now, you mentioned the governor, possibly you might look to him to intervene, uh, to force the city council's hand on this. He has that authority, the governor? Well, it's trade-offs. Yeah. The city council has certain bills that they need. Right? There's right. things that they need from the governor. And say, look, 
this is what I want. Look, politics is trading off, you know. Mm -hmm. I need this, you need that, let's compromise someplace. Right. That's the art of politics. This should be one of his priorities. The governor should prioritize going after the city council and saying, look, here's the things you want from us. We're not giving it to you, you know. And the governor's pretty good at that. You know, he thinks he's King, you know, King Andy here. And, I mean, he just... He's sitting there now with the $15 an hour. He's talking say. about he's going to implement it on his own. He's yeah. going to bypass the legislature. You know, I don't think he was ordained by God. I think he thinks he's been ordained by God. But, uh, you know, the governor's taking a page out of uh, President Obama's book and saying, look, I can do whatever I want. You know, so, I mean, there's going to be pushback because I'm actually looking at legislation. The They voted, the Senate majority and the uh, assembly major ma majority voted to give him certain powers, okay, where he can turn around and bypass the legislature and do things administratively. So I'm actually writing a bill right now of stripping that power away from the governor and saying you cannot pass a law or pass a regulation, right, that has been rejected by the legislature. If not, why are we here? We might as well go home. All right, but, um, you know, I, I've taken a stance over the last five years, and I've pushed back on this governor every time he, he oversteps his bounds. And, um, you know, I, I've said out in public that, you know, our governor is like the anti-Midas. Everything he touches doesn't turn to gold. <laughs> okay. You, you mentioned that, the, that the, uh, what the governor's trying to do, it's a priority getting $15 an hour minimum wage to uh, fast food workers. That bill was rejected by the legislature. So he figured, well, I didn't get what I wanted. I'm going to go gonna around the legislature. Anyway. Right. And he came out with that announcement, and I called my bill drafter, and I've been working on legislation now to stop the governor from doing stuff like that. So, And I can't see how anybody can be opposed to that bill in right. the legislature. So the, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of moving parts going on. Uh, I mean, if you look at New York rising, they make 76 jobs. All right, yeah. the millions and millions of dollars that we paid out for that. Uh, they, DiNapoli's supposed to be coming out with a audit, and they're talking about how he put it, you know, the commercials and stuff during his last election to boost him up, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, that's not drawing jobs into New York, all right? So the bottom line is people have to start looking and seeing what this governor's doing, and they have to push back a little bit. He didn't do that well in this last election, if you looked at it. I Not mean, upstate, he, no. Well, he lost most of the state. Mm -hmm. He won the cities, but yeah. he lost almost every county in the state. Mm -hmm. So I, he doesn't have a mandate to do this stuff. So, you know, I look at it, he screwed up education, right? He screwed up LIPA. You know, the bottom line is, you know, the SAFE Act, he screwed that up. I caught him. He didn't even exempt the cops. The way that he wrote the bill, if there was a shooting at an elementary school, the police would have to run to the edge of the property of the elementary school, drop their guns, and run inside. <laughs> because otherwise they'd be violating the law. Mm. So, I mean, I look at his legislation constantly, and it's like, who wrote this? Yeah. All right. So, you know, a lot of problems facing the state, and there's a lot of things we're pushing on, that, you know, whether it's a common core, legisl you know, common core curriculum, whether it's... Uh, LIPA, the cost of energy. Mm -hmm. There's just so many issues on the issues. table. Yeah. You know, and he creates more issues for us every yeah. day. But this is one issue he can fix. We're out of time. Okay. Keep fighting the good fight, Assemblyman Al Graf. Good to see you. Thank you. And good to see you on this edition of Assembly Calendar. We'll see you next time. I'm Ted Flynn.